In this video, I'll be talking about what it means to be a student author of an open educational resource. As I've discussed in earlier videos, open educational resources, or OER, are teaching materials that are openly licensed, which means they're available under a copyright license that lets people share and remix them. As a student, you make content all the time. You create quizlets for your classes, put together flashcards for yourself or your peers, and you work on assignments that showcase what you've learned. You may not be thinking about publishing or otherwise sharing this work with others, but why not? And how would that work exactly? Some of you may already know this, but the second you create a piece of content, you hold the rights over how that piece of content is used or shared. This copyright is meant to protect you from having your work used in ways you don't want. You don't need to register your work with the US Copyright Office for it to count. Copyright over your work is automatic. And even more importantly, you get to choose what you do with your work and how others can use it. Do you want to keep it for yourself? Publish it? Share it with others freely? You have a lot of options. So what if you want to share your work? You can use a license. A license is a way of giving permission for someone to use some or all of a work. And there is a spectrum of options for how copyright law and licenses work together depending on how open you want to be. On one end of the spectrum is all rights reserved works. No one can adapt, remix, or share that work without explicit permission from the creator. And every reuse of an all rights reserved work has to be spilled out in detail. This is how games like Marvel vs. Capcom get made, through licensing deals. On the other end of the spectrum, we have works in the public domain. You can build upon or create new additions to the work, but you can't lie and say you wrote the original. You don't need to ask for permission, and you have a lot of leeway in how you can adapt the original work as well. This is how things like Pride, Prejudice, and Zombies get made, for example. And in the middle, we have works that are available under a license like a Creative Commons license. You can think of these as some rights reserved works. Through a Creative Commons license, anyone can share a copy of your original work as long as they follow the rules of the license you apply. Having a CC license on your work means that it can be shared more broadly and more people can find your work. And even better, through adaptations, others can build upon your work in exciting ways by translating it, updating it, or providing additional context. And if you like those additions, you can always come back and make a new version by incorporating what those other people made too. Another cool thing about Creative Commons licenses is their variety. You have a few options for which version of a Creative Commons license you'll apply to your work. There are a total of six licenses made up of four pieces. The buy or attribution piece states that users have to give attribution to the original author when reusing their work. The SA, or share alike, condition states that users must use the exact same license when reusing or adapting a work. The NC, or non-commercial, piece states that users cannot profit off of the resource or any adaptation of it. And the ND, or no derivatives, piece states that users cannot alter the work in any way. As you can tell from those descriptions, some of these pieces are clearly more open than others. It's important when you're creating and sharing OER, or any open content really, that you understand what the different licenses mean so you can decide which you want to assign based on how open you want to be. So how do you add a CC license to your work? First, you choose the license you want to use. If you're not sure, you can meet with a librarian to talk through your options or use the Creative Commons Choose a License tool to walk through your options in more detail. Next, you need to mark your work with the license you've chosen. Usually, this involves a short line of text or a bit of audio like this. Open Licensing for Student Authors by Abby Elder is available to reuse under a Creative Commons Attribution 4.0 license. A link to the license terms is available in this video's description. That's an important point too, making sure to link to the full license so others know what they're allowed to do with your work too. For text-based projects, you might put your license information in a footer or on a copyright page, and in a PowerPoint, you could put your license on the title page or at the end with your references. Finally, you want to make sure to provide attribution for any other openly licensed works you've incorporated into your own. You can find openly licensed videos, pictures, and other materials with tools like Openverse or Wikimedia Commons. Once you incorporate them into your own work, you just need to add an attribution statement. This should include the item's title, its author, a link to the source, and its license information. You can remember this with the acronym TASL, or maybe rearrange the letters and call it SALT, whatever makes it easier for you. In some cases, like the screenshot I have here, an example attribution will be provided for you, so you can just copy that into your work. But otherwise, you can follow the TASL rules and you should be good to go. Thanks for watching! In this video, we've talked a bit about how copyright works and why you might want to openly license your work. 
We've shared information about different types of Creative Commons licenses and how you can mark your own work while providing attribution for other people's works that you adapt as part of your own. There's a lot going on here, so feel free to read up on the resources in the description or ask for help if you have questions about any of the topics we covered today.